Okay, we want to do a little bit of work with function notation. Over here on the board, I've written this function, y equal 2x minus 1. I'm also calling it f of x equal 2x minus 1, so I can use my function notation. And y and f of x then are exactly the same thing. So y is equal to f of x equal 2x minus 1. You'll see this function written any of these three ways right here. Over here, I've written a second function, y equal x squared minus 4. I'm calling it g of x, so g of x is equal to x squared minus 4. And y and g of x represent the same thing, so I can write y equal g of x equal x squared minus 4. Now notice y equal x squared minus 4, that's a quadratic function. I've drawn its graph over here. You can see it has a vertex at 0, negative 4, crosses the x-axis at negative 2 and 2. Looks like that. This is a linear function, y equal 2x minus 1. It has a slope of 2, a y-intercept of negative 1. It crosses the y-axis at negative 1, has a slope of 2. So every time I go over 1 and up 2, I'll get back to the graph. So that's what it means to have a slope of 2. Okay, let's see if we can use this function notation. So if f of x is 2x minus 1, what's going to be f of 0? Well, the function notation formula right here tells us exactly what to do. So whatever's inside the parentheses, I'm going to multiply by 2 and subtract 1. So if x is equal to 0, that means that 2 times 0 minus 1 is going to be f of 0. So 2 times 0 is 0 minus 1. That's negative 1. f of 1, same thing. 2 times 1 minus 1. That'll be 2 subtract 1, which is 1. f of negative 1. I do exactly the same thing. Multiply by 2 and subtract 1. So that's negative 2 subtract 1, negative 3. And over here, f of a, it doesn't matter what I put inside the parentheses, I always do the same thing. 2 times a minus 1. And what I do here depends on what I was given for the formula in the first place. So when I say f of 0 is negative 1, this is a value of x right here. And this is a value of y right here. So what goes in is x, what comes out is y. So this means that the ordered pair x equals 0, y equals negative 1 is on this graph. And sure enough, x equals 0, y equals negative 1 is right there. So these are inputs. And what comes out over here is an output. So you input x, and then what gets output is y. Here, this says that when x is 1, y is 1. Well, when x is 1, y is 1. So that point is on the graph. So the number that goes in here, these things are in the domain of the function. And what comes out is a number in the range of the function. So in the domain of this function, f is the number negative 1. In the range is the number negative 3. And again, when x is negative 1, y is negative 3. So x negative 1, y negative 3, sure enough, that's on the graph. Let's take a look at the function g. What's g of 0? Well, g of x is x squared minus 4, so g of 0 must be, that's right, 0 squared minus 4. 0 squared minus 4, negative 4. So that means that the point x equals 0, y equals negative 4 must be on the graph, and sure enough, there it is on the blue graph. g of negative 2. Negative 2 squared minus 4. That's going to be 4 subtract 4, which is 0. So when x is negative 2, y is 0. And sure enough, when x is negative 2, y is 0 on the blue graph. g of 3. 3 squared minus 4. 9 minus 4, which is 5. That means when x is 3, y is 5. OK, when x is 1, 2, 3, y is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Sure enough, that point is on the graph. And g of t, t squared minus 4. So once I know what the formula is for my function right here, I never do anything different. Whatever's in the parentheses, in this case, I'm going to square it and then subtract 4. So whether it's 0, negative 2, 3, or t, I do the same thing. I square it and I subtract 4. Here's my results right here. What's nice about function notation is this. I have two functions here I'm working with, y equal 2x minus 1 and y equal x squared minus 4. With this notation, the f of x and the g of x, when I say f of 0, that means that I want this function right here. If I say g of 0, that means I want this function right here. So it saves me time. I don't have to say when x is 0, y is 
if y is equal to x squared minus 4 or if y is equal to 2x minus 1. With function notation, I know exactly what I'm working with. Again, over here, what I have going in is values of x, and what comes out are values of y. These are inputs. So I input values of x, and what gets output are values of y. The things that I put in for x are in the domain of the function. Okay, that's a number in the domain, and what comes out is a number in the range of the function. So that's what I have right there. Okay, I want to do a little bit of more work with this function notation here, but I need to stop and erase the board, so I'll be right back. Okay, I've erased the board and put some new problems up. Over here, I have the same function for f of x and the same function for g of x, but now this time I want to find f of a plus 5. Well, like we said before, if f of x is 2x minus 1, then f of a plus 5 is going to be 2 times a plus 5 minus 1. So I'll write 2 times a plus 5 minus 1. That's all there is to function notation right there. The rest is algebra, just simplifying this expression. We don't do anything else as far as function notation is concerned. We just do the same thing every time. So here I have 2a plus 10 minus 1, and that looks like 2a plus 9. So if f of x is 2x minus 1, f of a plus 5 is 2a plus 9. How about f of x plus h? I'll do exactly the same thing. 2 times x plus h minus 1. I don't change what I do just because what's inside here changes. Once I've given the rule for the function, I do exactly the same thing every time. And this simplifies maybe a little bit. 2x plus 2h minus 1. That's about all I can do. Okay, let's move over here and look at g of x. What about g of a minus 1? Well, g of x is x squared minus 4, so g of a minus 1, a minus 1 squared minus 4. So I don't do anything different, I just follow the rule right here. a minus 1 squared minus 4. Hmm, let's see, get the square, the rest is algebra, right? I'm just going to square a minus 1, a squared minus 2a plus 1 minus 4. Okay, a minus 1 quantity squared. Remember, don't forget the middle term right there. It's not a squared plus 1 or a squared minus 1. It's a squared minus 2a plus 1. And let's see, I can combine these two right here and get a squared minus 2a minus 3. How about g of f of x? g of f of x. Again, it makes no difference what's inside the parentheses. Once I know g of x is x squared minus 4, then g of anything is that thing squared minus 4, even if that thing is f of x. So this is going to be f of x squared minus 4, and I happen to know that f of x is equal to 2x minus 1. So I can make that substitution right now and get 2x minus 1 quantity squared minus 4. And then I can multiply this out, and let's see, I'm about to go off the board here. 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 minus 4. Can I see that? Yep, that's okay. So then I would just simplify a little further. 1 plus negative 4 would be negative 3. I could write it out again. Okay, so a little more with function notation there. i got a couple more problems I want to work. All right, I erased the board. Here we go. Find x if f of x is equal to 0. Well, if f of x is equal to 0 and f of x is 2x minus 1, that means that 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. Add 1 to both sides. 2x is equal to positive 1. Divide by 2. x is equal to 1 half. So when x is equal to 1 half, f of x is equal to 0. And so you can see that's that point right there on the graph. x equal 1 half, y is equal to 0. When x is 1 half, f of x is equal to 0. How about if g of x is equal to 0, what's x going to be? Well, if g of x is equal to 0, that means that x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. I'll factor into x plus 2, x minus 2 equals 0. Set those factors equal to 0, and I get x equal negative 2 and x equal 2. And so when x is negative 2 and x is 2, y comes out to be 0, and you can see that's where that graph crosses the x-axis.